in this video series, we're going to focus on finding the inverse of a relation and then finding the inverse of a function. The first example we have is how to find an inverse of a relation. We define a relation as be, being given a set of ordered pairs. And so the inverse means that your x and y values switch spots, they switch positions. And so the way we write an inverse, and you have to include this part because you'll understand the notation, is the inverse means f, you know, to the negative 1 of x. So inverse means f to the negative 1 power. This is read as the inverse of f is equal to, and so when I do the inverse, all I do is just switch the x and y values. So this becomes 2, 1. This one becomes negative 4, 3. This one becomes 6, 5. And it's that simple when given a relation, when given a set of ordered pairs, you just switch the x and y values. Now that is the key. It's easy to do with relations, with ordered pairs. It's the same idea for equations, is you switch the x and y values. So if I want to find the inverse of f, remember f of x actually means y equals, so y equals 5x minus 6. So if I want to find the inverse of f, what I do is switch the x and y values. So instead of y equals 5x minus 6, I'm going to say x equals 5y minus 6. And then solve for y. So I would add 6 to both sides. x plus 6 equals 5y. And then I would divide everything by 5. And I'll put it over here. So that means I have, remember, to divide everything by 5. Each one is divisible by 5. So 1 fifth x plus 6 fifths. And this is the inverse of f. So the inverse of f is 1 fifth x plus 6 fifths. So when we were given relations, we were told, hey, just switch the x and y values. That's going to give you the inverse function. If we're given an equation, you do the same thing. You switch the x and y values. They just trade spots. However, we always solve for y when dealing with equations. So after you do that, solve for y. And that gives you the inverse function. So this is how to find the inverse of a relation and a function. You switch the x and y values for a relation, and then after you do that for an equation, you solve for y.